Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today's episode dives into a subject many of us are all too familiar with, debt. We have already heard on this show some of the difficulties starting a business, but add on a pile of debt and the mountain begins to seem impossible to climb. Like many individuals, I too have student debt, and in part, that is why I created this podcast for you, the listeners. You see, I attended grad school and I realized my business courses were spent reading case studies of entrepreneurs. My goal of this podcast is to educate you, the listener, what I learned throughout my educational career and what I continue to learn today by interviewing the entrepreneurs themselves. However, I do not want you to be straddled with the high cost of a college degree unless you want to. I would never discourage higher learning, but I will always encourage financial literacy. So grab a piece of paper and a pen and get ready to write down some gems. In this episode, we speak with a financial consultant to capture some free advice in the world of business financing. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. speaker and business consultant. After paying off almost $50,000 in debt in less than a year, he started a consulting company. Please welcome the founder of Horace Consulting, Devon Horace. Devon Horace with me from Horace Consulting. Devon, welcome to the man, Shades of Entrepreneurship, man, thank baby. Thank you so much for having me, man. Man, I'm, I'm excited a, about this. What? You and me both, man. Tell me about it. You got Tell you me. got quite a story, so I'm, I'm really excited. So let's kind of just jump in. Let's tell the world who is Devon. Yeah, sure. So, you know, <laughs> who is Devon? So I do, you know, want to say one, I'm from Rochester, New York. Um, you know, one of eight single parent household, you know, black single mother uh, raised in the hood, you could essentially say. And growing up, I had four siblings that were older than me or that is older than me. Um, no, I actually have three and then I'm number four. Um, but it's, it's like, I didn't have them as role models. Like I'm first generation high school, first generation college, first first generation graduate, uh, got like masters, and then also first kind of gen to leave my hometown and uh, move out to the to the West Coast. So I really like you know tried to pave a way for myself and just remain very very focused and determined to make that change of everything that's going on. Yeah. So you said education. Where'd you go to school? So I went to uh, School of the Arts in Rochester, New York. I played the viola for 14 years. What? Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell the people at home, what is the viola? So the viola is pretty much a uh, melodic tone than the violin. So violin has like the highest strings. Then it's the viola. Then it's the cello. And that's the one people are sitting down. And then it's the bass when you're kind of standing up. So I'm like that melodic uh, string major there. <laughs> Man, you know how many people are about to Google melodic right now? I mean, what? Gonna... <laughs> you, know, people, you know, get my mixtape, my EP. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So let's let's talk a little about your, about your consulting firm. Tell me about it. Yeah, sure. So uh, Horace Consulting um, pretty much started by, you know, paying off my student loan debt and like my personal loan debt. So when I first moved out here, uh, Portland, Oregon, when I first moved out here, I actually had $47,238.38 worth of debt. And thirty seven thousand two hundred thirty eight dollars and thirty eight cents of that was student loan debt. So that was after college. And I just was like, hey, you know, I don't want to be that person that someone says, you know, I'll never go broke because Devon owes me money. I was like, absolutely (laughs) no way. So I was like, you know, if I really want to propel my investment career, if I really want to propel my entrepreneur or my business building uh, career, I have to get rid of this debt. I have to get rid of this burden because it's actually, you know, preventing me to getting to where I need to get. 
And that's kind of really how it all started. I started looking up some personal finance stuff. I actually started, you know, reading a ton of content, a ton of things, uh, following people on Instagram and YouTube that that's all they spoke about. And once I paid off my debt, which was a uh, May 2nd, 2017, I kind of just shot from there. And that whole, you know, horse consulting started with personal finance soon became personal finance and business kind of strategy and business consulting where I help uh, small businesses and other businesses and creatives, uh, mainly creatives. I, I find <laughs> attractiveness to creatives and uh, creative mind people um, that I would just help them with their business strategy, rather it's, you know, business operations, rather it's uh, getting funding or, you know, uh, just getting their financial aspect of their business together. So that's really what Horace Consulting is. It's based off experience and just me trying to teach others and, and fill in that gap because building a business is hard. You know, yeah. you need a team. So I just want to help people and be a part of that team. Nice. So you, so you mentioned you kind of work with the creative people. Is that is there specific industries that you work in, like the art industry, music industry, or is it just pretty holistic, anybody? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much anybody. Uh, I do have artists. Um, I do uh, work with like creatives or graphic designers and, and people who actually build things as well. Uh, by build things, I mean like build like tinkering and different devices and stuff like that. And, you know, I just got into the digital world. So, mm -hmm. so I'm just kind of like working with everyone. Uh, you know, one thing about business, if anyone out there who's like, you know, you don't really need an MBA and, and all that stuff you hear, one thing that you learn in your MBA class, everyone's different, but it's like, you read a lot of case studies and you can learn a lot of operating a business from those case studies. That's very true. In fact, that's kind of the reason we started this program, right? The Shades of Entrepreneurship to really focus and interview the entrepreneurs to say, hey, this is how it started. So, so really, how does it work? How does your consulting firm work? You know, how you, a, a client contacts you and say, hey, we want to put up to business, this uh, create a business plan. And, and do you kind of collaborate with them? How does that work? Yes. Yeah, so pretty much they reach out to me on, you know, my website, consultinghorse.com. And, the, you know, it's pretty much like a Calendly link. It's just like, you know, sign up. Are you reaching out to me for personal finance or are you reaching out to me for a business consulting? And then once we kind of talk over like a Zoom call, we just pretty much say, hey, what are your goals? Like, what are you trying to get to? I get it. You have this business, you, you know, probably selling hoodies and T-shirts or something like that. But, you know, what's the overall goal? Are you trying to grow? Do you just want a kind of passive side gig kind of hustle thing? Or are you trying to, you know, actually build some kind of operational form? So I try to really understand what that uh, client needs are and then also where they're ultimately trying to go. And then I tell them, you know, pretty much how I can help them do that. Nice. So, so I'm going to flip it on you. Right. Because you're asking your clients what their goals. What What is your ultimate goal? Yeah. So honestly, my ultimate goal is to, you know, help as many people as possible and also become like a name like, you know. So is this is this documentary on Netflix called The Godfather? And like it's about, you know, him in the music industry is like, you know, you want to do anything. You got to go to Claris. And it's like, I want to be that person. I, I want to be like that behind the scenes person. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I heard about this VC or I heard about this new Uber. You got to talk to Devon first. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So so when you started this company, what what problem did you kind of set out to solve? Yeah. So one of the main problems I set out to solve was to inform people, especially the people who don't have the access to so much data and, and, and just don't know really where to look. I just wanted to give them that information uh, because the information is out there. Now, granted, you know, we live in the technology world where media is kind of just like who could put out there first. But I felt like, you know, how do people know which data is real or what data is valuable in, and you know, what's just like a blog or just, you know, whatever somebody just speaking, you know, just it, basically just trying to hype everybody up. So I was just like, Hey, you know, like this information is for people that, you know, I do like the NBA, I did the studying and I went through the debt freedom journey. How can I also share this with other people from a experience point of view? You know, like I actually done the work. So I'm like, okay, how can I give this to others so we can then in return, you know, create a better society and a more financially uh, aware uh, community. So how, how difficult it or, or easy was it to begin this consulting firm? Like what if I'm, I'm new to this, I've never, 
you know, think of me as somebody who's never started a consulting firm, but interested in right, starting one. Right. So I would say this, like, you know, when you're starting a consulting firm, it is a skill, right? So it like, what skill do you believe you have mastered? And I know people here master like 10,000 hours and you know, all this other stuff, but it's like, what skill do you really know better than someone else? Right? Like when you start a business or when you are a coach or a consultant like myself, you can charge people for the work that you do better than them, right? If you're like, oh, I do really well with resumes. I'm a resume builder. You know how many people don't know how to build a resume, including myself? Right? <laughs> so it's like, you know, if you're really good at, you know, uh, uh, coding, if you're really good at just talking to people and bringing resources together, if you're really good at event planning and putting together dinners, like you can be a consultant yourself and just be like, hey, I'm good at X. Like this is my one thing that I'm good at. Yeah. Yeah. So now when you started this, how long, how long have you been doing this now? I've been doing uh, horse consulting has been operational since 2017. Okay. So um, five, almost five years now yes. coming up, right? So yes. now looking at that, looking back on that, was there like a, a moment, like a milestone when you're like, you know what, this is, this is doing, I did the right thing. Yeah. So uh, actually I had a client and, you know, I was like, you know, this is my first client. I want to give him a good, you know, a nice impression. And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm going to just work hard, do everything I got to do. And um, this one client gave me such a huge opportunity to do an event for them. And I put together like the business uh, kind of like plan and I put together like the vendors and just managed the vendors and everything. And the event turned out extremely well. I got a lot of media press and actually I had like a little kind of like a little snippet in there just saying like, you know, we spoke to the business consultant, Devon Horace, and he was telling us blah, blah, blah. And I was like, just that little piece. Like, it's like, I was able to bring this thing to life and someone believed in me. And ever since then, you know, just people reaching out to me, asking for my advice, of course, Instagram, but I knew like people wanted this information because of the interactions and the engagement I was getting from others. So I was like, yeah, you know, people like this content, I guess. Yeah. So, so you essentially created a new business idea and created growth. Absolutely. Right? So what advice would you give clients about creating new business growth? So like one thing that I always advise clients on is being in service of others, right? Because, you know, when you build in a business, you can only go so far, right? If you, let's think about Uber, right? How many of, how many of us have been actually taking a car anywhere, and getting picked up and dropped off anywhere, uh, you know, just in normal days or normal times, right? You had to call a taxi. If you're in New York, you had to call like some kind of like car service, but they were able to allow everyone, the average normal day Joe to be able to have a car service, right? If you think about Amazon, Amazon has allowed everyone to be able to shop online and shop with just a simple click of a button, right? The one click system thing that we all see today, that's one of their uh, software kind of technologies. So it's like, how are you in service of others? And again, those people that I name are multimillionaires. I mean, Jeff Bezos is like the richest man in the world, right? So it's like, how are you coming up with a system to help the masses? And when you do that, I mean, you can even get five, one percent of that and you would still you know benefit extremely well right so how are you in service of others and through servicing others you actually find your purpose as a uh, human being here nice now have you you know working with these clients the last couple of years have you noticed any um like common issues that everybody seems to kind of face yeah it, it's it's just it's rushing it's mm. rushing. It's like, you know, one thing I always say, especially to some of my clients now, and I always say the one thing I always say, but I, I emphasize on a lot of points with my clients and that's, you need a team. You can't be the graphic designer and the marketer and the ad space person and the business and the finance person. Like when you're first starting off, if you got some, Oh, I, I sell t-shirts. Yes. You have softwares like Spotify or I mean, Shopify, excuse me, or, um, you know, a square space that can allow you to be kind of like a one man team. But if you want to grow and if you want to actually uh, scale, you're going to have to start bringing in some professionals in that one craft or in that one niche that's going to help you propel because you have to focus on your one thing. You know, Gary Keller, that book, The One Thing, what is your one thing? And once you focus on that, 
that would give you time to be or think more creatively. That would give you more time to operate at your highest frequency. But if you're, you know, that's for example, like me, like if I'm like, Hey, I'm doing business operations and marketing and dealing with the vendor and driving play people places and, you know, creating the graphics It's like you get wore out extremely fast. And I see a lot of, you know, small business and just people getting started doing that. I mean, some people show you that and they are successful with it, but it's not very common. And I don't suggest it. I mean, you could just tire yourself out extremely fast. Yeah. And you'll go in and you'll start in your, your company. Did you ever felt in yourself like a moment of like self doubt or self doubt in the company and the consulting, maybe like, man, am I doing the right thing? Um, I mean, honestly, I did not because I started off by just, again, being in service of others. I just um, automatically was like, Hey, if I stay true to my word, if I, you know, am a trusted resource and if I keep providing this data and this kind of like this, this information, this skill, I feel like, you know, I'll be in good hands. But again, I kind of thrive off helping others. So when someone come to me and say, Hey, I really want this to be done. If I can't do it, I'll tell them I can't do it, mm. but I would say, Hey, I am unable to do this, but maybe reach out to this person. Here's another resource that's kind of better at it. Or, Hey, you know, if you're looking to do this, try to reach out to this partner. So I always try to give someone uh, a resource, even if I can't do it or someone better than me, or I said, you know, it's just better that way as a small business community and just as a consultant community. And then what, what tips would you have, you know, for folks that are trying to be financial literate, right? Cause I think that's something a lot yeah. of people at home are wanting to, what, what tips do you have for them? Um, I mean, so I have an ebook, um, that I wrote and like the, I, so like there's so many tips out there and I'm trying to just think of kind of very straightforward ones, but it would be, you know, just paying off your debt. That's like number one, because again, as I was telling you my story earlier is it's like, it is such a crutch on life and it, and it forces you to kind of start very late on, um, you know, taking higher risk to have big rewards. So, you know, get rid of your debt, live it below your means. And I like, when I paid off my debt, I ate pasta for a year straight. So I don't recommend that <laughs> because I already did it. But like, you know, you could do rice and beans, rice and corn, lentil, like just really affordable meals and don't go out and get like, you know, the chicken parm and like the big dinners, right? It's just like live below your means. And what and what people really mean by that is do not let your expenses surpass your income, right? You want to at least have, you know, probably like a ratio, like, you know, uh, 20% over 30% over, uh, for your income over your expenses. And, um, you know, like a main tip that I would say is that, you know, all of, uh, all of what you earn, a part of all of you earn is yours to keep. Right. So I read this book called the richest man in Babylon. And that book changed my life when I first started off because it has such these, uh, like fundamental, uh, guidelines into how to live a financially stable or financially free life. And it's just telling a story, right? So once I kind of found that book, I was like, man, you know, save 10% of everything I own, you know, make sure that I invest in things that's going to make my money, make money. And most importantly, you know, just living below my knees, my means, excuse me, and not just balling out and just going crazy because it's easy for us to do that today, especially with social media, right? Because we see everybody wins. We see everybody like with the rented cars. <laughs> I'm sorry. Those Lambos are rented. Okay, <laughs> Like those, those phantoms and all that, those are rented or leased. Right. So it's like, you see all this stuff and it's, it's like, it's very glamorous, right? Like, and this is nothing new. I mean, social media just has exposed us to more things, but it's nothing new. People, sell you on glamorous things, right? Like diamonds are a girl best friend, right? That's like one thing we studied in business school that was like a big hit for marketing, right? So it's like these things are targeted to us uh, and we can't necessarily afford it, but we still get any way to fill a part, right? To fill a part of the system or a part of something. So once you learn how to kind of step away from that, and just kind of live the life that you want to live, man, your life, like when it comes financially, your life is going to just streamline. It's going to propel you to a whole different place. Yeah. You know, since you've, you know, you've done this for a while now, right? Yes. You've been yep. doing this. Have you ever felt, you know, 
in your position growing up and feeling like any, what, what, what has been some of the difficulties of it? I mean, other than being black in America, right? Like, you know, just like I said before, like I, I went to public school. I grew up in the hood. I'm one of eight, um, you know, black men in America. It just, every time I try something, someone would tell me like, oh, you know, you can't do it. Or they'll just be like, you know, you're, you're a you know, statistic or you're, you know, uh, I remember one time this one guy that I used to work for, he was like, when you look good, I look good. And I was like, at first I was just thinking like, man, what does that even mean? But now I understand working in corporate America. I'm like, ah, I see some people hold on to other people because they see potential in them, but it's really for them. You know what I'm saying? It's really for them to be like, hey, I brought this person up out the mud. Now, it was a white guy. So he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to grab my little, you know, smart black kid. And I'm going to give him these resources and stuff like that. And this is going to be my contribution. But, like, just getting through that alone, my friends who grew up in the hood, like, oh, you change. You know, you 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 talk white now and all <laughs> this stuff. Like, you know, um, and also just leaving them, right? It's like, hey. You don't want to go to college. That's fine. I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to go to graduate school. You don't want to get a job. I'm going to go. Right. Because it's like, you know, some people have seasons in your life. Right. So it's like, you know, you grow up with them, but you know, we're meant to change. I think one meme that I love on the internet is like, is a caterpillar and a butter, a butterfly having coffee and the caterpillar was like, man, you change. And the butterfly <laughs> was like, well, that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> So like when I saw that, I was like, man, like it, it you know, these things, it, I mean, so many people have in kind of uh, things that's holding them back. And I'm not saying they don't. Right. There are certain systems, uh, systematic oppression that's going on. Um, but it's like, how long are you going to let that thing hold you back? Like, I get it. Like, it's a struggle for sure, especially with everything going on today. But at some point, the person can't deny your skill. The person can't deny your work ethic. It's like, oh, I hate that person. I mean, they're going to save me millions of dollars, but still not going to. No, that doesn't work like that. Yeah. Yeah. And looking back on everything, you know, from where you're at today, coming from Rochester, New York, you know, now here in Portland, Oregon, what advice would you give a younger self of you, you know, for yourself? Take risk, man. Like when I moved out here, I actually, uh, I, when I first moved out here, I, I made a huge risk. I was working in New York City. Uh, at the time, I was in Brooklyn, New York. And I was like, you know, in order for me to come uh, work in here in Portland, I have to be in Portland because it's across the country, you know. So I was like, I have to come out here. And the first week that I was out here, I stayed at the Motel 6 in downtown Portland next to the Oregon Convention Center. Mm-hmm. And I came like when my flight was like a red eye. So when I came, I came too early. So I couldn't check into my hotel. So there's actually a park across the street from the Lloyd Center. And I didn't know this was dangerous park, by the way. (laughs) But there's a park right there next to the Max. I slept in that park. Oh, man. Oh, man. Until it was check in time. And now I look back at it and I was like. Man, that's such a dangerous part. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, with that being said, like, I took that risk because I was like, you know, I know where I want to get. You know, I know where I want to get to. Like, I just was like, now, granted, I don't, I don't want anybody sleeping outside, but how far are you willing to work? Or how hard are you willing to work? How far are you willing to go to chase after your dreams? Because, again, you know, there's some people like, I dream to be, you know, a famous artist. I dream to be a a, a, a graphic designer, the best designer. And it's like, well, how, how much do you work on your craft? Like if you know that music is, you know, in New York or the birthplace of hip hop and stuff, it's like, why aren't you in New York? Or it's like, oh, you want to work on your art. Why aren't you in Europe and Italy somewhere learning the history of art? Like, what are you doing to actually go chase your dream? And, and it's just really just like that. So what, what dream are you chasing? So the dream I'm chasing right now is to be the godfather. I told you. <laughs> I want everybody to know, like, hey, go talk to Devon. I'm telling mm, you. Man. So how do people get a hold of you? Uh, you know, you can reach out to me. Uh, go to my website, consultinghorse.com. I mean, my website is just a placeholder, to be honest. Like, I just want somebody to go there and find resources and, and get in touch with me via email. But I respond a lot, and I respond all the time on my Instagram. So if you just, you know, at d.horace, that's d.h.o.r.a.c.e., 
I would reply to your DM. Like we could chat it up. I'll send you links and stuff there. It's just easier to kind of engage on Instagram. But you know, you can check out my website. You can check out my work. Um, you can check out some articles that I was featured in and, and kind of <laughs> fact check me here. But uh, <laughs> but no, definitely like reach out to me on Instagram. I'd love to chat with anyone. Now, last question. Would you do it all again? I won't sleep in the park. I tell you that. Uh, <laughs> You're not going to uh, sleep in Lloyd. <laughs> honestly, I would I would do it all again, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I would do it in a different way. Okay. I would definitely do it in a different way. And and by that, I mean, you know, you, everyone loves to say, I'll never change any. I don't regret anything. It's not from a, a place of regret. It's a, a place from learning. You know, when you fail, you're actually just learning in a different way. That's how I look at it. So it's like, oh, you know, maybe I should have went left instead of going right. Oh, maybe I should have never signed that deal. Or maybe I should have took a higher percentage. But it's like you learn these lessons to push you forward to the next deal, the next client, the next big opportunity. So again, like there's a few things that I would look back at and be like, oh man, you know, I could have done something different, but I've learned from that. And it's actually pushing me to the next level, which I'm thankful for. Man. Devon, thank you so much for your Man, time. Thank you. This thank has been a you. great conversation. I hope the individuals at home have found some gems out of here. Please check out Horse Consulting online, social media. Just check out Devon, hit him up, DM, give you some information. Thank you again, everybody, for listening in and have a great night. Thanks, man. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.